On May 5th, 2021, dozens of people gathered at the Navajo Nation capital of Window Rock. They were wearing red and holding signs in honor of the missing and murdered Indigenous women and girls. Navajo Nation has seen more than their fair share of murdered and missing women. Among the crowd was the family of Laverta Sorrell. Laverta went missing in 2002 in Fort Defiance. Her brother Charles Guy stood at a podium and spoke. He pointed out that 19 years ago, she was last seen in Fort Defiance. He said that since then, they have been through three different FBI agents. Her children have become adults and had children themselves. The family has placed a billboard and reached out to the community repeatedly with no answers. They have offered a reward. Laverta's case remains unsolved. Hey everybody and welcome to True Crime Paranormal with the Psychic Sisters. This is Katie Weaver and I'm here with my co-anchor, sister and partner in crime, Christy Brower. Hello. Hello. Hey everybody. How's it going? It's good. You know, the life of a diabetic. Mm. If you guys aren't one, just thank your lucky friggin' stars. I was telling Katie, if I do or say anything weird, it's because I'm recovering from a low. Like, I'm okay. Yeah. I'm up in normal range now, but I still feel kind of shaky and sweaty and weird. And just like, you know, being a diabetic is a pain in the ass mm. all the time. Yeah. But yes, other than that, is. I'm good. Well, I'm sorry you had a low. Yeah. The constant need to balance between you don't want to have mm -hmm. a high and you don't want to have a low be in this tiny little range yeah give me never ending yeah, yeah. it's tough. well boo yeah. well i'm glad you're doing better now and that you're here yeah. because i do have a cold read case for you tonight mm -hmm. today whenever you're watching this <laughs> and it's an important one. And, and I'll tell you how I know it's an important one. When I found this case, uh, it really grabbed me. And I started to research it and I was ready to go forward with it. And one of my criteria when I look for a case is, is there enough information to really make a video? Because unfortunately, right. in the MMIW cases, a lot of them, there's not. One of these days, we're just going to do an episode that encompasses like 10 that have very little information so that we can at least say their names, you know? Yeah, we really okay. should. Cause yeah, that it's so hard. It to happens get. all the time. And so I started to take a look at this case and I'm like, I really want to do this case. I'm doing this case. And at the end of the day, I went, there's not enough info. I just can't do it. And so I moved on and found a different case and I was ready to move forward with that one. And I was reading an article about that victim and this person came up again. And I went, oh. okay. And then I, and then again, a, set, a third article and a bunch more information. Uh, oh, good. Surfaced and I went, it's still light on info, but I just can't say no to her because she just keeps surfacing for me and we're gonna say her name and we're gonna tell her story. So. That's why we're doing this one. And I apologize. I wish there was more info. I really, really do. But this is what there is. So, but she deserves her story to be told, regardless of how much information is in the stratosphere, right? right. So I want to tell you guys about the disappearance of Laverta, Laverta Sorrell. So Laverta went missing in 2002. And it was one of those deals where everybody felt like they knew what happened to her, but nothing happened. So she actually apparently went missing on the 4th of July, 2002. Okay. She wasn't actually reported missing until uh, several days later, until July 8th by a family member. Okay. Her sister and her daughter report that she had been going out to dinner with her husband for their anniversary. 
and was never seen again. Mm. And eventually the uh, police, the authorities finally said in 2019, they finally said that in an interview, the husband said that he dropped her off at work. Well, she worked at a school district. And he says yeah. that he dropped her off at work at 11 p.m. on the 4th of July. At no, the he did office. not. No, yeah. he definitely did not. And that is where the case goes cold. She was never heard from again, never seen again. No arrests were made. That was it. So the authorities just accepted that bogus story? They aren't saying anything. Her family mm. has tried and tried and tried to get more help. And, you know, her brother recently at a MMIW uh, Awareness Day, he spoke to the crowd uh, and he said that they had been trying now for all these years to get any, any justice for her, any information out there, and that uh, it was a known domestic violence situation. Yeah. He also says that they are on their third FBI agent, that they've really struggled to get anybody to pay any attention at all to Liberta's case. There is now... Um, a group of FBI agents that are looking into 15 MMIW cases on the Navajo Nation. There's a little bit more energy in it. They are offering a $10,000 reward for any information into her disappearance. But again, she has been missing for 19 years. Again, there was the assumption, well, maybe she just left. She are had you 14 getting daughter. Right. She had a 14-year-old daughter and two younger sons. She had a sister that, and quite a few other family members, but a particular sister who said that uh, Laverta was like a mother to her and sister and best friend. And her family agreed. She wouldn't have taken off. She wouldn't have just ditched her family. No. She was a stable mother, a matriarch of her family. She was not just leaving for no reason. Well, and those accusations always piss me off because it puts the victim in a negative light as though they're just the kind of person that would just yep. walk off and leave their family. Surely and it's Why their do we fault. always hear these stories about women mm -hmm. and about women of color? Like, yeah. like oh, they just leave their family. No, yeah. they wouldn't. No. That's bullshit. No, they would not. Mm -hmm. yep. Yep. Yikes. Yeah. It's maddening. Those are things... Yeah, that set my hair on fire, without a mm -hmm. doubt. So recently they actually did some fundraising and were able to put up a billboard near Gallup with her information as well as uh, who to call it, the FBI, if you have any info, publicizing the reward. They're still really hoping, you know, and of course they are, but they're still really hoping to at least get some answers about what happened to her so that they can at least have some kind of peace. So that is what we know. Wow. Her family says that she was basically everybody's mother. She was just as remembered as somebody who cared about everybody, would draw anyone in, a child, an adult, anybody who needed somebody, she'd be there for them. She was just that kind of a person, uh, but uh, was in a bad situation, clearly. So we're going to take a quick break. And when we return, Christy, I am going to give you an opportunity to read this case. So we'll take a break and we'll be right back. All right. And we're back. <laughs> That shocked you a little bit. That was quick. It took me by surprise. Yes. Um, so, of course, we're talking about the disappearance of Laverta Sorrell and the um, 
situation regarding her disappearance. So Christy, I'm going to ask you to weigh in. What are you seeing here? So this is exactly what it looks like. This is exactly what everybody thinks that it is. This is a domestic violence murder. My sense is that when they were going out for their anniversary, Laverta was taking that opportunity to let him know that she wanted a divorce. I feel like she was going to try to end the relationship and get out of it for herself and mostly for her children that she wanted out and that she told him that. Couldn't handle it as batterers do. Went into a jealous rage. I think that he strangled her. I keep feeling something here in my throat. And he left her body like out on the desert somewhere. He didn't even bury her. He just left her out somewhere. And I can't tell you exactly where, but I just feel like it's out on the Arizona desert somewhere where it's very, it's remote. He just drove out a really long ways out where people don't normally go and found a spot that looked like he could stick her under a rock or something. Like, that's what I feel like. I don't feel like she's even buried just awful. And unfortunately, at this point, I do feel like it's going to be difficult to actually find her body. Yeah. Because of where she was left, you know, there's a lot of, um, you know, animal activity. Yeah, between predation and the elements. Yeah. yeah. But when he said he dropped her off at work, for Christ's sake, I can't believe they took that face value for one second. Uh, what he was really meaning is he was dropping her off in the desert and then he just went home and pretended like he didn't know where she was. But it was her attempt at getting out. I do feel like she had really had enough and that she was trying to be brave and tell him how she felt in the hopes that he would be a reasonable human being, which he's a batterer, definitely not a reasonable human being. And um, I don't feel like he's ever going to say what he did. Yeah. I feel like that he'll take that with him to the grave, that he's not going to be honest about it, which is really sad. I hate that because there are children here that have the right to know, you know, siblings and other family members who clearly love her and who have kept her case alive for 19 years, yeah. who have the right to know. I don't think he's going to admit it. Because no. there's a part of him that doesn't believe that he did anything wrong. And that's what's gross about this is that, you know, she stood up to him and he couldn't tolerate that. Yeah. Yeah. What a, All right. what a sad story. And I wish I had better news for her family, yeah. but I feel like they, they know. Oh, they, they just know. want acknowledgement. They just they want, want justice. Yeah. yeah. They want somebody yeah. to arrest that jackass and you know well they want this... to not have had to beg and plead with the authorities to actually give a damn about her and get involved and do something but this is the problem with the relationship between the tribes and the fbi mm -hmm. there's bad, also been bad, some bad situation absolutely there's also been some jurisdictional issues as well which there always is. That's the biggest problem, you know? Right. It makes well, it way too easy to pass the buck. Right. Conveniently, they can all say, well, this isn't really our problem. Mm -hmm. That's just horrifying. Like, really, what the, what the hell, you know? Yeah. But I, you know, I, I really, my heart goes out to her family. And I really appreciate that they keep her name alive and that mm -hmm. they you know, don't let this go because yeah. so many people would have by now through three different FBI agents on this case. Give me a friggin' break. Yeah. They're working real hard. Can't you tell? I mean, they actually it's accepted the last that couple story. of years that they've really kind of taken a look at it, actually shared some information with the family, you know, acted like they were doing anything at all. 
but pretty it's pretty much too little too late. Yeah. Yeah. So you know, one thing that her daughter said in an interview is that uh, the Navajos are a matriarchal society. And the fact that so many of their women have been snuffed out is mm. such a hard thing for their, I mean, not to mention that it's just horrifying and awful anyway, but right. it's a terrible thing for their uh, community, for the way they typically operate, because the grandmothers are getting snuffed out. The future grandmothers are getting snuffed out and it's creating a lack of leadership and a lack of guidance in their communities that's really showing. Yeah. Wow. Well, yeah. That's horrifying. Mm -hmm. That's just horrifying. And, you know, I know that there's been some legislation and some work being done and now we have Deb Haland as the, um, Secretary of the Department of the Interior, and she's doing some work on this. We're going to see some better things, but mm-hmm. you know, this case has been going on for 19 years. It's, yeah, they shouldn't have had to wait this long. That's just bullshit, is what that is. Entirely, entirely. We need to get mad. We need to stay mad. We need to continue to ask our representatives at every turn, "What are you doing about this?" Yeah, we need to get involved. I'm looking at the fact that, uh, you know, this family has participated in many walks and uh, events and places where they could at least show up and say her name. And that's that needs to keep happening. We have to continue to say their names mm-hmm. and continue to tell their stories and continue to keep the heat and the pressure up to solve these cases and to get on them and solve them a hell of a lot sooner than 19 years. Right. Absolutely. Well, and, you know, go looking on social media, on Reddit, on Facebook, there's on Twitter, the MMIW movement in the U.S. is out there. Mm -hmm. And there's a there's a national organization and then there are local organizations and Mm -hmm. go join the national organization and then go join whatever's happening in your local organization as well so that you can be a support, you know? Yeah. So, because yep. they'll help you to know, like, what's being voted on. What do we? Who do we need to call? Who do you know? Mm-hmm. There's good help there, so that you can be a good ally, and that's what we need to be if we are Absolutely. not native. Is to be good allies. Absolutely, and that that's means, what we can do. That is yeah. what we can do, and that means supporting the movement that's already happening. Mm-hmm. And that's probably why those cases are being looked at again in the Navajo Nation is because there's been some pressure. Yes. It's taken yes. way too long and it doesn't have any money behind it, which it really needs to have. Yeah. You know, yeah. we need a national organization with money, mm-hmm. um, federal money. Mm-hmm. We also need some serious, serious work between yeah. um, tribal law enforcement, county law enforcement and the FBI. We got to get this figured out because it's bullshit. Yes. I did want to share a few names uh, of organizations because Mm -hmm. her brother Guy, who had, you know, spoken recently at an event, Mm -hmm. he mentioned the Southwest Indigenous Women's Coalition. Oh. The National Indigenous Women's Resource Center. The Navajo Nation Council Delegate, the Missing and Murdered Dine Relatives Group, and Walking a Healing Path. And so if you're looking for a group to support or a group to look into, I'm, I'll put all of these groups in the description so that you can take a peek at them if you would like to. They mm-hmm. would love your support. And just to... Uh, know that there are people out there that care, that are keeping an eye on this and want to be involved. So uh, this is one of many, or, you know, some of many, but these are a few that have been active in her case and others as well. So, all righty. Well, thank you very much for that. Mm -hmm. And uh, thank you to Laverta for uh, pushing me to do her case because she uh, obviously showed up. Yep, time and time again. We're not going to walk away from that. So here we are. Uh, Guys, this is our Wednesday case. So we will be back tonight with case updates. We'll be back tomorrow night with the Psychic Hour. 
both of those are live stream shows. They're at 7 p.m. Mountain Time. We'll be here on YouTube and also live streaming on Facebook. So come and check it out and come hang out with us. We'll uh, update you on any cases that we're following and share other things too. It's always a, a good time, an interesting time to share with you guys and watch for some uh, pop-ups this weekend. A little birdie told me that she's going to be, uh, you know, covering a Shark Week style case in honor of her favorite week of the whole damn year, Shark Week. Yes, so, I am. I definitely am. That'll be on Saturday. So keep an eye out for that. Very good. So that's what's happening. So thank you for being here. If you would like to suggest a case, just head over to True Crime Paranormal Podcast.com and scroll down to the bottom of the page there and you'll see it. You'll see the spot where you can suggest a case and we'll put it on our list and look into it uh, as soon as we can. We have a lot. We're, we're working our way through them. And as you know, um, you know, the stupid fallow case just keeps grabbing our attention again. <laughs> so We're doing our best, but you know, it's actually been a quiet week with the fallows. Isn't that weird? It really has. What's happening anyway, but that's what's going on around here. So thanks for being here. Please like, share, subscribe, the works. And thanks for being here, guys. You have been listening to True Crime Paranormal with the Psychic Sisters. Take care. Bye, guys.